<laughs> Things are nowhere near as rosy for Chelsea, who find themselves oh, at the boy. bottom of the uh, Premier League yeah. table right now. Mauricio Pochettino apologised to the fans after the 4-2 home defeat to Wolves. Here's what he had to say about that and about the perception of where Chelsea should be right now. Just a reminder of how things did turn out for them. Obviously, it was the last thing that they did need. Is he coming on or not? Uh, yeah, it's going to come on. Chelsea winless in the last three matches. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm desperate to hear from him. <laughs> well, he's he trying to think what to say. Because there's mind. a conversation to be had here. To there, there absolutely is. And here's what he had to say. Oh, he's not, he's not speaking. I hope it's worth the wait. No. He's too busy on the calculator. Him, OK? <laughs> the perception is Chelsea should be in a different position. To understand the fans is really important. We want to apologise. We are disappointed like them, but we need to fight together. We need to stay together. They are right to criticise and be angry, but the players are young. This young team needs support. To be at this club, you need to be strong. Oh. Mario, what do you make oh. of all this, oh. having to apologise, Pochettino, for what we saw from Chelsea? I always say this, when a manager does things like this, you know there is some trouble going on. And, of course, look, look, you, you, you played a game before. You know, you lose that game, what is it, four goals <coughs> against Liverpool. Then you have the next game, you can see it again, four goals. This doesn't help. That means defensively and, and also when you looked at the game, you understand they were going on a lot. And the feeling was, uh, let's see what we're going to do now. Then they come back in the game, Wolves. And I, I always said it there, eh? Gerard O'Neill is doing a great job at Wolves. And I think some people maybe are not aware of it. And I mean, the ones that, that watch it, of course. But the ones that, he is doing a great job. He did it at Bournemouth when he came there. And in, out of the blue, he left the job, comes to Wolves, picks up and continues his run in the sense of like tactically being really smart. Because when you are a coach and you know that you, that you play in a certain way and you're making sure that behind Silva is where the space was to hurt them. And that's what's behind Chilwell. So on your left-hand side, that's where they kept, kept on clipping the balls in. And that's what, because Silva doesn't like to go all the way out. So he worked on that. He worked on that tactical side you understand, to making sure that Silva has to come out. But that is not what Silva wants to do. He wants to keep everybody narrow and making sure because no many plays in the middle of the tree. And then the game carries on. And then, come on, guys. You see, uh, Cunha, I understand you can uh, deflection on goals because people will say, oh, deflected and this and this and that. But the way the kid played, he proved something in the sense, look, you can only get deflected in, in scoring goals when you're trying. And when you watch Chelsea, it, it didn't look dangerous. And some of the guys that came on did not change the game. And we were talking about before the show um, about players like Mudrik, for example. But just in general, I feel like Chelsea has a difficulty in the sense of like they allowing people to come to the bridge and knowing there is something to get here. And I have never experienced that in my time playing there, but also watching them. And I think at the moment they're at a position now where people are too comfortable and they spend a lot of money. Look at the numbers. You put them up. It was over a billion <laughs> they, they, they spent in getting new recruitment and people are there. And, and, and Pochettino came out and said, like, I'm sorry for the fans, but he also said the players need to take some responsibility. But that is normally not because you have to lead them. And I always said from the beginning, I believe in him, but I still feel that he has to put his foot down a little bit more because this is not looking really good at the bridge. Should his job be in danger right Let now? me just punch it. Shall I punch that into the algorithm? <laughs> Please do. See what it says about Chelsea. Well, there's a lot of talk about, about his job and whether, whether they garbage. can even Well, listen, I, agree. I was watching yesterday because I sat at home twiddling my thumbs and uh, I, I'm kind of with Gab a little bit and the, the manager needs to do more. And I think Mario is sort of pointing that way that he has to lead. You know, his, his, his record at the moment is worse than Graham Potter. But Graham Potter was ridiculed. Too big, club not ready for this. You know, he managed Brighton, managed Palace. He's in for, he'd probably be in for that job if Roy Hodgson, Hodgson gets the sack. You know, all this sort of stuff. Nonsense. Uh, pie in the sky. His record is worse than Potter's, and yet Potter came in really late, right? Had no pre-season because Tuchel got the sack. So jumped straight in. They had European football which was Champions League, which is 
extra tough. They don't have that now. Uh, and, and Pochettino has had none of that. Yeah, he's had a Carabao Cup run and he's got to go to Villa in the FA Cup. But he had all pre-season to work, which the previous manager didn't have. He did not have that. On top of that, the money that's been spent. Now, yeah, the players have to take responsibilities, but the buck is going to stop with him. The midfield is terrible. <laughs> terrible. 200 plus million and it looks awful. Getting dominated by Wolves, getting dominated by pretty much everybody. Uh, and and you can talk, we can keep talking about a front man. A front man, it's like, that's like, that's like building a roof, building a house, but the roof on first. It's pointless. You've got to get the rest of it right. And the rest of it is not right. I like the goalkeeper, but the back line, <coughs> it's back, it's back. <laughs> I, cough, I knew it. The back line, and the boys talked about it yesterday, 39-year-old, can't last. The other one's coming in. You know, Rhys James, great player. I'm worried about him, injury problems. Chilwell, out and in, out and in, likes to go forward, can't defend. <clears throat> Badia Shield, making mistake after mistake when he plays DCC. I haven't seen anything really yet. Caldwell's played out of position when he's played. And then we get to the middle of the park in the wide position. So before you get to this, we need a striker. You need the foundations to be right. And at the moment, they're not. Now, should they be playing better than they are with better results? Absolutely. First of all, we, everybody knew Pochettino was going to be Chelsea's manager before the end of last season. It was the worst kept secret in, in football. So while <laughs> Todd Bowley takes a lot of... A, a, a lot of criticism around around the signings, certainly, well, since he's been there, but certainly this summer, I, I cannot sit here and think that Pochettino didn't have some kind of a say in who was brought in over, over, over the last summer. I, I refuse to believe that he did not, <coughs> that Pochettino knew nothing or didn't have a say as, as to who came in. I think Pochettino also got... A little bit of a buy in the first half of the season because their struggles was all because Nkunku wasn't fit. Now all of a sudden Nkunku is and Chelsea are no better at all. We are seven months in, probably over seven months if you want, if you want to consider the, the, the summer, of Pochettino's reign at Chelsea and nothing about Chelsea has improved from day one to now. The only bright spark you can see is Palmer. Gallagher has been has been very good. Petrovic has, has been good since since he's come in. I remember he was he was primarily signing in my mind as a number two. And Thiago Silva, who God bless him, he's probably trying trying to retire, but but realizes even at 39 years old he can't because he's Chelsea's best defender. Yeah. And and for for me. While, yes, we could throw a lot, a, a lot of, of the blame at, at Todd Bowley and, and a lot of, of, of the disorganisation around the club at him, Pochettino hasn't done anywhere near enough um, to justify being able, being able to show up now seven months in and all he can offer is, I apologise to the fans. That's, that's not good enough. Now, a lot of fans might say this from certain clubs... But I think if you were to ask Chelsea fans, what's the one thing you would change at that club if you could? It wouldn't be the manager, although he uh, shoulders a lot of the a fair amount of the blame, and it wouldn't be certain players. It would be the ownership. I think there is a lot of disillusionment with their ability to understand this particular sport and how it works. And I, yeah, I get it. They brought people in, and we were having that same conversation blah, 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 blah. with Manchester United. I said, who, yeah. who, who, do you change your squad, do you change your manager, do you change the owner? And more times than not, people would say the owner. So it's, it's kind of the same thing. No, it, well, it, it is, but I, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really see any light at the end of the tunnel for Chelsea. Not this season. As I mentioned, they haven't got Europe. There's a fair chance they're going to get a, a, a spanking in the Carabao Cup final from Liverpool, unless fortunes change very quickly, because that's what they got at Anfield. And... If you see what Wolves did to them and others, there's no reason why by that time when all those players are back for Liverpool that we've talked about today, they should be pretty much at full strength. Uh, it's difficult to envisage anything other than, than that. It might change. It's a cup final. Uh, but th at this moment in time, you would not rule out Chelsea finishing in the bottom half of the league. 
And that that's that's some that's some statement when you consider the amount of the amount of dosh that's been spent at that football club. And they have reportedly one of the top coaches in Europe and, and Maurizio Pochettino. That's what he's supposed to be, but you go to Paris and talk to people over there, they'll tell you that, that wasn't the case. Yeah. That is a bit of a circus, I'll give you that. So this is all but really... His reputation, sorry, Mario, his reputation is really all about what he did at Tottenham. And maybe a little bit about Southampton, but that's... You know, it's not yeah. like they've Chelsea have gone out and got themselves a Klopp or a Guardiola or an Ancelotti who's obviously been at Chelsea before and... I just don't see... There's nothing I'm looking at at Chelsea that's not saying teams will not score against us, home or away. Mario? I think, I think it's tough as it is, you understand, for, uh, for the players, because, I mean, if you're an individual, you're standing on the field, it's very difficult, right? But he, as a coach, um, he, he said certain things, and I said it from the beginning. I, when Poch came in, I said it was a sensitive moment, but I said, like, OK, you know, with the background that he, that he possessed in the sense of what he did in the Premier League, I thought for the young boys, they could be, you know, the right fit. OK, then we go back, and now, look, it's seven months in, what the guys already talked about, seven months in. And even if they, the, the fans now are starting to, to complain in the sense of, like, they're singing Mourinho's name, they were singing in the last game. They, they were asking for the old owners. Things like that, OK, that happens always in football. But you also have to take that serious. So I understand that, that maybe that allowed him to, uh, you know, uh, show his apologies. But I don't, I don't want him to, to jump too, too long on that. Because eventually they got key games coming up. Eh? They play Villa. Then they're going to play Palace. Palace is in a difficult situation. And please, I'm asking them, don't go to Palace. And because Palace is in a terrible situation and don't go and help them out and not performing against them. And then the City game and then the final against Liverpool. Because people thinking about the, the final against Liverpool, they say that might be the one, the anchor where he's hanging sense of like he's in the final because if they win it, they're going to Europe. But you also have to remember that the game before Liverpool is against Manchester City. So that means that they could walk into that final with even lower confidence than they have right now. And I think this is one of the key things that you really, really care for. I want to talk about the top four odds right now. Obviously, something that we don't need to worry about Chelsea with at the moment. But uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. First of all, just a reminder of the FA Cup games coming up. Chelsea in action against Aston Villa. Replays here and Plymouth Argyle taking on Leeds United. You'll be able to see both of those games on ESPN Plus on Tuesday and Wednesday.